Hello everyone, my name is Skits and welcome to episode 8 of Skyrim Arts Weekly. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching. First mod we'll be taking a look at is called Resplendent Racial Package by N.I. Sion, author of Thunder Child Shout Package reviewed in episode 3. His newest addition is aimed on the races of Skyrim. He decided to add 5 new effects and powers to add more diversity and uniqueness to each race, so that choosing race for a character is not only based on their look or different stats for health, magic and stamina. Now instead of me talking about each race separately, you can see race's name on top and a small showcase of abilities I found most interesting. If you want to see full list in action, you can check out Insane's video, link will be in the description. I personally liked all of them, I liked what Morator did to make each race a lot more unique and fun to play with, but if I had to point out a few of my favorites, I would go with Dunmer's Spirit Walk, Kashi's Ravage and Redguard's Virable to Defense. Now from the beginning, you will only have 4 abilities available and you'll have to unlock 5th one by completing a quest unique for each race. Quests usually involve one of your racial powers, they are not very hard but take some time to complete. Another great feature is that these new powers are also used by NPCs and make combat even more diversive and fun. There's also an Basmer NPC only power called Forest Walk that makes them invisible in combat when they are at full health. Overall, I really enjoyed this mod, each one of races now has its unique style of gameplay, now you can base your characters and their tactics solely on their racial powers, mod is low friendly, powers are balanced, I did not fault any problems with this mod and I definitely recommend it. Next up we have Kick Bash by Evan Oblivion. This mod replaces basic bash animations with new ones. Right now they are only available for one and two handed swords, so if you are a lover of maces or warhammers they will not work for you and of course they won't work in first person mod as well. Now as you can see these new animations are a lot more acrobatic and also take more time to perform. There is a separate animation for clicking and holding attack button for both one handed and two handed swords, meaning there are four new animations for you to try out. Now let's talk a little bit about each one of them. After clicking attack button with one handed sword, you'll do a simple low kick and after holding it, you'll perform a spin kick. When used with two handed weapons, simple click will perform front kick and after holding it, you will do some sort of double spinning flip kick. There is also an optional file that will replace all animations with front kick one. In combat, these animations are pretty much useless since they take some time to perform and unless you download knockdown effect mod, they will serve more like an eye candy and you will never use them in combat. But overall, Marato did a good job on them, I personally like them and if you don't care about their combat usefulness, then you should go ahead and try them out. Moving on, we have alternate summoning visuals by the grey light. So we all know how awful vanilla summoning effect looks. That purple ball effect is one of few things I never liked about Skyrim magic, but now Morato changed it into something a lot better. Now, whenever you will use a summoning spell, instead of purple ball that came out of nowhere, you will see a small circle coming out of the ground that will get bigger as your summoned creature spawns, making summoning look a lot more subtle and arcane. Now as you can see compared to the original summoning effect, new one looks a lot better, I personally love it and I'm definitely keeping it. So if you just like me never liked the original summoning effect and you want to try something new out, then this mod is for you. Now let's take a look at Bruce Hammer Legacy by Team Bruce. This mod has fully voiced companion, 5 huge quests, tons of new world spaces, new weapons, armors and spells into the game. First let's talk about Bruce himself. You can find him in Derelict Pump House inside of Blackreach, where he will greet you in his own way. Or maybe you're here for the Elder Scroll. Probably not, it's only worth 2000 gold, which is completely stupid. In my day, we had to fight a giant mechanical lich to get our Elder Scrolls, and you know what? It was actually worth something. Other than that, there's nothing worthwhile in Blackreach. Not unless you've installed Moro Loot or Dwema Spectres, which you probably haven't. Now as you can see, Bruce has a very unique look and personality. He is sarcastic and has no problem with insulting Dragonborn, so if you don't like harsh language, Bruce is not for you. Oh boy! Boy, you get to kill a giant oversized cliff racer. Big deal. You want to know what makes you really badass? Punching Vivek in the dick so hard the godhead wakes up. He also has few unique traits. He has his own mount and combat AI that makes him switch around styles and run around battlefield. While talking about combat, I also have to mention his own weapons and spells. For example, he will throw trains or vomit steam on enemies, making him a very strong companion. You can of course change that to more balanced version, so he won't kill everything for you. 
He also has 100 lines of commentary for all cities, most of towns, ruins and caves. Voice acting is good as well, it has that needed sarcastic tone. What the fuck is the cloud district? How am I supposed to know if I get to it when I don't even know where it is? Now let's move on to quests. You can start them after fighting at least 30 battles with Bruce by your side, or you can begin one of quests after completing Sanguine's quest. Quests will take you throughout various original world spaces like Shugaria, where you will fight sweet trolls. Quest objectives are also diverse and unique. One time you will be searching for a scroll, in next one you will be fighting aliens. In the end you will also ride a giant robot, but that moment is so amazing that I'll let you discover it by yourself. Mar also contains new weapons and armors that are obtained through quests and are definitely worth it. You can also find tons of culture or popular mass references that mainly come from Bruce. Overlay Marato did a great job, only way you wouldn't love Bruce is if you only like war friendly mods, but even then Bruce is worth a try and I definitely recommend him. Moving on to companion mods, first one I have for you is called Shadow Tigers Vision by Shadow Tigers. This mod completely changes look of almost all vanilla companions. On the left side you can see original look of them, on the right side there is a new one. Now what I mainly like about this mod is the fact that Marathor was not only focused on women, like most of our house do, but he also did a lot of male characters. Most of them don't resemble their vanilla counterparts at all, there are some huge differences and you may not like all of them. I personally love the new Vilkas, Farkas, Ella and Eric the Slayer. Reworked followers have less Skyrim and more beautiful modern and cleaner look, but I still think it can fit the lore and is not over the top too much. Mariator also released and is still releasing a standalone version of each follower, so you don't have to download the whole package. Overly, Mariator did a good job, I like what he did with most of followers, and if you like Vanilla Companion's new look as well, then this mod is for you. Next up we have Akavidi follower Reiko and Armory by Leto86. This mod adds custom female companion, along with two sets of armor and three weapons into the game. First let's talk about Reiko. You can find her inside Bannered Mare in Whiterun. Reiko is a Renman descendant of the Akaviri that once lived on the continent of Akavir. She is a proficient in one-handed weapons, light armor and prefers dual wielding in combat. She is also essential and you can marry her as well. Now as you can see her face is highly detailed, she's not prettiest girl out there and looks more like a warrior rather than a baby doll. Now let's talk about new weapons and armors. Armor you could see on Reiko is her own custom set and most of it cannot be crafted and is Reiko exclusive except for a few parts. Second armor is called Redmond armor and you can craft it under still category at any forge. As you can see armor looks amazing, it has beautiful high resolution textures, it is very shiny and also has tons of small details. Even though it is not lore friendly, I still loved it and it is one of the best armors I saw in a while. Three new weapons can be crafted at Forge, each one under its own category and are custom as well. Each one of them has custom texture that looks very good and just like Reiko and armors, they look like they came from Japan. In combat they were not too strong nor weak and had no problems with bandits but struggled a little bit against stronger enemies. Orly Marato did a very good job on each part of the mod and if you like Japan like me and also good looking and high quality armors and weapons then this mod is for you. Moving on we have Hill House Returned by Italia. This mod adds a new house into the game. You can use boat near southeast end of East Empire Company that will teleport you there. Marato has already released this spooky house while ago, he removed it for some reason but now it is back. Marato's main goal was to create a very old dark house that was still grand and beautiful and I think he achieved that. If you like role playing and you play as a vampire or any sort of bad and dark character then this house is perfect for you. Now as you can see outside of the house looks just like if it was cut out of some old horror movie with vampires and werewolves and the interior is not very different. Inside you can find all the basic things you need for living, along with a few specialities like Dragon Priest's mask holder or organ that plays creepy music. If you think that vampire themed house means there will be gore and blood everywhere, you're wrong. In my opinion, Marathor's version of vampire house is a lot better than Bethesda's and I liked it a lot more. And if you don't like vampires at all, you can change bedrooms and dining rooms decoration to something more human. What I mainly love about this house is its unique atmosphere and that it is inspired by old horror movies and I definitely recommend it for anyone with a taste for dark and creepy houses. Now let's take a look at armor mods, shall we? First one I have for you is called Gilded Doublet by Alice. There are two versions of this outfit, one is a light armor that can be crafted at any forge under leather category and clothing version craftable at attaining rank. 
Now as you can see it has custom textures that look very good, fits Skyrim lore very well and also for a good amount of details. What I love about this armor slash outfit is that even though it is mainly for females it is not skimpy but still very beautiful and it looks good on any female character without revealing too much. So if you're tired of skimpy female armors you're gonna love gilded doublet. There is also a male version and a few color variants so there is plenty to choose from. Overly, my author did a great job and like I said if you don't like skimpy armors and enjoy less revealing but still good looking outfits then this mod is for you. Next up we have blooded heavy armor by Gutin Scarfin. This mod adds a new set of armor and weapon into the game. There are two versions of armor available, an enchanted one that can be crafted at Skyforge under steel category, an enchanted one that can be obtained by killing Ulma along with shield called Tarjo Blooded that was inspiration for this armor and completes the whole set. On Ulma you can also find a small backstory about armor and enchantments for it. Now as you can see it has both custom textures and mesh, I love all the details and spikes around it and for some reason I felt really heavy while wearing it, maybe because of all the heavy spikes. The textures are great as well, they have a lot of small details and I really enjoyed them. New weapon is called Blood Mace and as you may have guessed it is a mace with tons of spikes on it. You can get it from Ulma as well and as you can see it also has custom textures and it completes the whole set perfectly. It also has a special ability that makes it swing a lot faster than regular mace and in combat it had absolutely no problems with enemies. Overly, I really like this armor and weapon. It is something fresh in the world of scary mods and I definitely recommend it. And the last mod we'll be taking a look at is called Nordic Kukri by Ketelvich. This mod adds a new one-handed sword into the game. You can craft it at any forge under steel category. As you can see it has custom textures and mesh. Both look very good, I like huge amount of details that went into all parts of weapon, especially handle and I also like all of the Nordic symbols on it. Even though it has Nordic symbols, I still think it is not that lore friendly and would fit Red Guard a lot more, but weapon still looks amazing and I really liked it. In combat it was effective as well, but still balanced. Only Mato did a good job on this weapon, I liked it and you should go ahead and check it out. And the last thing I wanna talk about is that I'm also starting my own Facebook page where I'll be posting regular updates, some funny pictures from recording and maybe even some tips and tricks on how do I make videos and stuff like that, so make sure you leave a like there. So yeah guys, I guess that's it for this week's episode of Skyrim Arts Weekly. I hope you enjoyed the video, leave a like if you did, tell me what you think about it in the comments, subscribe for more Fallout and Skyrim content and I will see you next time.